Hey guys, welcome to Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'm Jeremy Yoder, and today we're cooking prime rib on the Franklin Barbecue Pit. Really quick, I want to give a big thank you to today's sponsor, Curiosity Stream. Curiosity Stream is an incredibly affordable streaming platform where I can watch thousands of well made documentaries and learn more about different topics, including history, technology, and my favorite topic, science! One documentary I absolutely cannot wait to watch is David Attenborough's Light on Earth. It explores the science of bioluminescence in Earth's creatures and looks absolutely fascinating. Whether David Attenborough is talking about penguins, sharks, or the three-toed sloth slowly searching for a mate, I know that I've loved every single documentary he's ever voiced, and I can't wait to get into this one. If you're looking to learn more things, then I highly recommend you check it out. And because you've subscribed to my channel, I have a great offer for you. Go to curiositystream.com slash msbbq for unlimited access to the world's top documentaries and use promo code msbbq to get 25% off, which comes out to only $14.99 for the whole year. So click the link below or go to curiositystream.com slash msbbq and save 25% right now. I watch a ton of documentaries, especially the science ones, and for me, Curiosity Stream is worth every penny. <laughs> A lot of people find it difficult to use the grease that they have from the grease trap, but you can use it to get your fire started. And uh, rather than lighter fluid, which is artificial, you just have a natural accelerant in there to get everything going really fast. And uh, burning grease is not a bad thing in your smoker necessarily, because uh, a lot of the flavor from burgers comes from the grease that gets burned. So I have no problem using this. I think it's good. And it makes lighting your fire a heck of a lot easier. And I always kind of put it on the top because it melts and drips down, gets on everything. And then in no time flat, you got a fire going. When I first light the fire, I leave the cook chamber door open because I'm not trying to get a bunch of dirty smoke going over the grates and kind of depositing on those grates. So I leave it open so I get maximum airflow and I'm using big logs at the beginning because I want to build a big coal bed, but that comes with more dirty smoke. So I keep everything wide open, let those big logs burn into a big coal bed so that the first time I put on a new piece of wood when I'm cooking, it's going to light immediately. we're going to do for this rib roast is very simple and the reason is I'm testing out the smoker I want to see what kind of flavor the smoker can impart rather than what I could do with compound butter and herbs and a bunch of spices so this is going to be salt pepper simple trim go on the smoker to see what we can get in addition to the simple prep that we're going to do for this rib roast I'm going to cut off two big thick steaks that I'm going to use for another video that you'll see soon all the marbling, the size of that cap right there, spinalis. That's going to be a good steak, nice and thick. It's going to be money. This big piece right here, you can use to grind for burgers or sausages or some other purpose, but because it's so much thinner than the rest of this rib roast, it's not gonna cook the same way, and so we're just gonna take it off because we want as even cooking as possible. We're 
going to put it on at 275 and treat it like a brisket for the first few hours. The way we're going to cook this prime rib today is pretty simple. First, we're going to treat it just like a brisket. We put it on at 275 because we want to bring up the temperature slowly and build in lots of smoke flavor. And then, like a reverse sear, we're going to dial up the temperature as hot as this smoker can go. And the reason I had this idea in the first place is when I was seasoning the smoker, I was trying to get it, you know, about as hot as it would go. But what was happening is it was getting over 500 degrees and I was concerned for the future of the thermometer, so I even took it out because this thing gets screaming hot and so I thought, well, why not treat it like a convection oven that can get ridiculously hot and you could use it to sear things like prime rib. So that's what I'm testing today and I think it's gonna work really well. It's been about an hour now on this prime rib, so let's see what kind of color, which tells us about smoke, and what kind of fat render we have on it so far. We have good red color here, which tells me there should be good smoke flavor on this. Also red color here, and the fat has broken and kind of separated right here, which tells me that the fat is already starting to render, even though we haven't even turned up the heat yet. It's been about four hours at this point, so I want to check the internal temperature of this prime rib, and I also want to see the color on the outside, so let's take a look. So the outside surface of the prime rib is looking amazingly good. I cannot wait to get into it. And the internal temperature is 130 degrees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it off and take it out of the smoker and let it rest for a few minutes. It's going to continue to carry over in terms of temperature a little bit. So it'll climb maybe 133, 135, and I'm looking for 135. But hopefully it doesn't continue to cook for so long that it overcooks. So I'm taking it out and letting it rest. And then I'm going to put a bunch of wood in the smoker and get it as hot as I can make it go. And then for probably two to three, maybe even four minutes, I'll put the whole prime rib back on so that I get a really good crust on the outside, but I don't overcook the center. adding some coals and some wood and with a little help from the leaf blower we are just north of 500 degrees right now so I'm gonna take this guy put it back inside for probably just about two minutes because it's so so hot it's gonna give us a nice crust on the outside that's hot All right, we're going to check on it. Two minutes. While I'm waiting these two minutes, I just noticed by looking at the stack that the smoke is so clean, I sometimes can't even see the mirage of the smoke. It is just shooting out of there so fast and it's so clear that it's hard to tell it's even on. All right, that's time. Let's see. Oh, yeah. That's looking good. Oh, do I get greedy and go one more minute? 30 more seconds. All right, here we go. Ooh, that's hot. All right. 
now that looks good still sizzling right there i like that this is looking really good but the real question is did we overcook it so i hope not i want to be between 130 and 135 ideally or lower if it cooled more while it was resting that's good the carryover is going to take it exactly where i want it very happy All right, we're gonna let this rest right here for a few minutes, probably 15 minutes or so. Then we're gonna slice it up and see what we've got. We're gonna taste it. I am really excited. There are a few things that I smoke that get me really excited. This is one of them. But uh, the smoker, okay, the smoker is still screaming hot over here as it approaches 600 degrees. So for the sake of the thermometer, I'm taking off the thermometer. Do not wanna ruin this guy. That's, that's hot. So, still reading about 600, I think, maybe 650. But I'm afraid it doesn't stay, well, I'm afraid it might stay that way, so hopefully it doesn't. Nope, it's dropping, okay? I hope I got to it in time. The smoke is so clean, you can't even see smoke coming out of that hole, really. We've waited almost 15 minutes, but I can't wait anymore. I'm gonna slice this open and see what we've got. Yeah, it's just uh, the coloring. If we take it inside, it'll look totally different. One of the effects of being outside is the color of the meat doesn't show up really well. So this is a medium rare, but on camera, I'm not exactly sure how it looks. But what I'll do just in case is I'll take a slice inside and we'll get some shots of that so we see what it looks like or how it would look normally. But it is unbelievably juicy. I mean, just juice is pooling on this slice. So what I'm gonna do is cut off a piece from the spinalis here, and then one from the kind of the eye of the ribeye, and uh, see how those taste. So the spinalis out here is gonna have the smoke and the crust. This piece right here is just gonna tell me how well I cooked the whole thing. All right, here we go. This looks good. Hmm. Man, that's hard to beat. But if there's anything that can beat that, it's going to be this piece from the outside. Ooh. This right here, call my name. All right. Oh, it smells so good. Unreal. If a brisket and a steak had a baby, it would be this, and it is wonderful. Uh, the fat on the outside is rendered so well, it almost tastes sweet. You get the kind of juicy explosion from all the, the water that's in the meat below. Wow, that's really good, and the smoke flavor comes through crystal clear. I don't know that I'm ever gonna do prime rib any other way. I really hope you guys were able to see what I was able to see inside, totally different than the natural light outside, and that is exactly how I like my prime rib to be cooked, so I was very pleased with that. But the flavor was incredible. Some of the chunks of fat on the outside, it was almost like bacon, you know, bacon that's been perfectly cooked. It's crispy, juicy, just beautiful, melts in your mouth. It was a great, great way to cook prime rib, and I think it's gonna be the way I cook prime rib from now on. If you haven't ever tried it, I would suggest doing it like this, wonderful, wonderful way. If you found the video helpful, hit the like button down below and subscribe to the channel. And you can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'll see you guys next time.